A lot of people in uh, the field of AI uh, start to see intelligence as the ability to be effective over a wide range of environments, to reach your goal over a wide range of environments. And that's a bit different from uh, most of the highly intelligent people that I know, because they tend not to work very well over a very wide range of environments. Sometimes they're very good only at very narrow environments, like mathematics in certain areas in there and so on. And um, I think that intelligence is probably not that much related to intelligent behavior, which is a very meaningful uh, category, but intelligence itself is the ability to model. And uh, often these models are not very useful, but uh, they are interesting. And if you try to optimize for the interestingness of your models, maybe that's not a very smart thing to do, but it could be a very intelligent thing to do. In the sense, it doesn't give you any success, but it might be amazingly interesting to explore that if your mind is so inclined. And to focus on the model that a system makes rather than the behavior of the, that the system makes is, uh, gives you a very different perspective. For instance, DeepMind became very famous for building a program that is able to solve goals over a wide range of environment. That is, it could not only play a single game like chess, but it could play many, many Atari games. Basically, with the same algorithm, you could give it an Atari game and it was able to learn to um, achieve or outperform humans at that game. Often the strategies that were quite different from humans because a much better reaction time made uh, fewer mistakes in its micromanagement of its movements and so on. But the interesting thing, it started from zero. So it looked at a bunch of pixels for this thing that was just bits and it wouldn't uh, look at Pac-Man and think, oh my God, I'm this yellow uh, moon-like thing that eats pills and maybe, uh, I'm haunted by ghosts and maybe these pills are antidepressants and uh, I have to do this because the ghosts are haunting me. And uh, sometimes I find fruit, which is good because it's healthy and I get better. And uh, sometimes I find these big pills. They are maybe like Adderall and it makes it possible to turn around and hunt the ghosts. That could be a story that you could tell about Pac-Man. But uh, for this machine learning system, it's nothing like this. For this, they are just different bits and these bits move in a different way. And then I press certain buttons, that is I perform certain actions. And then I press this button and this button in sequence, when this and this situation happens, as a reaction to this and this pattern, then my score increases. And the system only increases the score. And the fascinating thing is it's able to find meaningful patterns. And it's not a trivial task to do so in, in these bits that allow it to decide when to do what to increase that score. It's very different from what a human does when they play Atari games. When the human plays Atari games, if he plays X and we um, explore alien space stations, that's exciting, the score is not that important. Of course we want to be good because otherwise we cannot explore that many space stations, but it's really about building that model. The next thing, if we play Donkey Kong, we fight a giant ape that, rescued, uh, that abducted a princess and we try to rescue that princess, right? It's, it's not just that we move left and right to uh, get an obstacle out of the way. Uh, on a technical level, playing a car driving game on at Atari uh, 2600 back then is not that different from playing Pong because you move something to the left and to the right and try to uh, avoid being hit or in the case of Pong try to hit it. But uh, the story is very different. And uh, to get these semantics right, to get the understanding of the narrative right, I think is at this point the more interesting task. But it's harder to measure. And as a community we try to get things that we can measure. And that's good, because if you cannot measure it, you will end up hand-waving. But it also means that you have difficulty dealing with those things and researching those things that are harder to measure. I think that uh, the uh, fear-mongering about AI is related to the fact that the public now thinks that AI might work. And uh, it's so before, uh, there was an absence of fear-mongering, which mostly the result of a, a public not thinking that AI might work. And what uh, is the reason that larger parts of the public now think that AI might work? It's large, largely the commercial success of AI applications in everyday life. We see them every day now. We see our phones become somewhat intelligent. We can ask our phone where a restaurant is and it can tell us. Um, my children are able to uh, game our household by using the phone interface even before they can learn to write. Uh, it's quite amazing what uh, our technology can do now. And in a few years from now, we have self-driving cars. So uh, that's very interesting, but the technologies behind this, are how revolutionary are they? There is undeniably progress, it's quite tremendous progress, but on a conceptual level, we don't have that much progress. I think we now understand to a very large degree why neural networks work and how they work, but um, we don't understand how to turn them into minds yet.
the general form of a mental representation seems to be a probabilistic algorithm. For instance, when you learn how to program or to speak a language or to solve an arbitrary problem, you don't just, you don't just do gradient descent on, on that domain. Um, what you do is probably um, something else in the learning mechanisms that we are using at the moment. So we probably need different ways of functional approximation than we are uh, at the moment deploying an AI, and we don't know what these are. So on a theoretical level, we are still ahead of the curve in the sense that most of the technologies that we have uh, developed or are currently under development are not yet deployed, and there is going to be a tremendous shift in the everyday use of technologies because of this. It's, uh, machine learning is a super important technology in computer vision and uh, fusion of modalities and so on. We're going to see amazing things there. But uh, we don't know yet how long it is from there to mines, how many steps we have to go. And there's certainly some theoretical breakthroughs that we uh, don't know how to make yet. I think it's a very exciting thing to be a researcher and uh, to uh, work in artificial intelligence because uh, we still don't know all the answers. And we are in a situation where it really makes sense to think hard and the, uh, the most interesting things that happen are probably not so much at the top level, because at the top level we understand a lot of the philosophy or begin to understand it. But uh, at the bottom level, so directly at the interface between computation and self-organization into a learning system. And uh, I find this immensely fascinating to look at this growing boundary of human knowledge. Maybe for the last time ever <laughs> that it's possible that the human mind can learn something new that nothing else before it has found out. Thank you.